Hi there, Shabbat Shalom everybody and welcome to our Church Our Saviour Christmas service. We are just a few days from Christmas and there are so many exciting and wonderful things happening these last two weeks. Just last week, we heard about seven people who came to the Lord from our community outreach. Three more people accepted the Lord through our Alpha Zone program. Three more accepted the Lord through our online healing service where Pastor Derek came to preach and minister for us. Seven people accepted Christ just this very last week in our prison ministry, JIW. And then we heard that seven more people accepted the Lord through our Filipino service. And it's not even Christmas, so Christmas has really come early. You know, if you're one of these people who have just joined the family of Christ, the Kingdom of God, through our community at Church Our Saviour, I want to personally welcome every one of you and say how much we are rejoicing with you. We love you and we would love to get to know you even more. So God bless you and what a wonderful decision this is. You know, we have a really good online meeting with our Japanese friends. And this is our missions because we cannot go to Japan. We're actually meeting them online and we just had a wonderful meeting and the positive response was so encouraging to many of us. It is looking like this season of pandemic is turning out to really be a season of fruitfulness and tremendous harvest. God is a God who specializes in turning things around from what is negative to something positive to what is dead, to something that's alive. And He does so because He loves us so very much. You know, actually, we have been wanting to demonstrate a bit of this wonderful love of God to every one of you. And I hope that by the time you're listening to me say this, that all of you or nearly all of you would have received a little message, a little token of love from Kuz as a family. We have also found ways to Uh, help one another's businesses, to find ways to support each other financially. And if you're one of these people who need such help, please approach us because we are all about demonstrating the love of God for the world around us and more importantly, for the family of God. We believe that as a kingdom of God, we need to continually look out for one another in love, but also in practical ways. And I pray that in this season of Advent, you may experience a little bit of that warm love of God. We love you. Okay, now, this year, we are celebrating Christmas a little bit differently, if you have not already noticed it. Instead of our usual festivities and the things that we put up, the shows that we do for our community, we will instead be spending Christmas mostly at home with our families, with our friends, with our loved ones, in small groups. For some of us, we might be spending Christmas with maybe people that you go together to church with, right? Maybe in your cell groups. But for a small number of us, we might be spending Christmas alone, connected to the rest of the world only by some digital thread. In short, Christmas appears to be kind of disrupted by the circumstances of the world that we live in, hasn't it? And this week, as we draw near that time of the year, when we traditionally are reminded of the birth of Jesus nearly 2,000 years ago, we want to ask ourselves what Christmas really means for us. Is it still relevant in this pandemic-ridden world? Have the sense of time buried any semblance of meaning for what we are about to celebrate together? Or have the winds of history and cultural change rendered the message of Christmas irrelevant and impotent? These are important questions for us. Questions that can potentially transform our entire worldview and our self-view. So what can we learn this Christmas that is vitally important for us today? Well, first of all, we learn that God is not a Zoom God. He is not a distant God behind a mask or a veil, but a face-to-face God. You see, God created the entire universe, but He was not content with having created everything in its vastness and diversity. He he was not content with the fact that His presence can be found in every corner of creation. Out of all those trillions and millions of planets and galaxies out there, He wanted to come and find us. He was not satisfied with just being creator. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8 says this, 
Let this mind be in you. That is to say, have this thinking, think like this, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. You see, the creator of the universe owns everything. The cattle on a thousand hills was his. And yet, he left all of that. He sent his son, giving up everything because he chose a relationship with us, with you and me, over the rest of that universe, over the power, the status, the glory. He chose you, though the universe was his. God still pushed past every galaxy, all the constellation, past light years of time and space, just to seek us out in this lonely blue planet. And then, as if that were not enough, he wanted to be even closer to you. And the best way for him to do this was to come and become like one of us. This is what Christmas opens with. The God who wanted to be near you and me, who chose us. Secondly, we learn that this God is not a nameless God. He has a name and he knows your name. It was not enough that he came to this world in the form of a man to stand in history under the vicissitudes of life, but he made himself known to us with a name, the name of Jesus. I would like to read to you one of the famous Christmas narratives from Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 to 33. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, that is to the father of Jesus, saying, Joseph, well, the human father at least, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you marry your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. That is the name of God, the name of Jesus. That name Emmanuel means God with us. The purpose of having a personal name is for nothing else other than to establish a relationship. See, you don't need to know someone's name if you don't have a relationship with them. Well, God gave us His personal name and He knows our name so that we can have a personal relationship. In other words, through the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, God was expressing His deep desire to be close to us and to know us personally and intimately. In this world, when we often feel like we are just a drop in an ocean of insignificance, one out of seven billion people that populates this world, the creator of the universe sought us out. He knew us and he remembers us by name. The prophet Isaiah wrote for us the words of God, but now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Here it says that God is calling us by our name. So I don't know what your name is, John, Peter, James, Achong, Atong, Akong, okay? God is calling you by that name. That's what the Bible tells us. And His intention is so that He can walk with us through the thick and the thin of life. So you will not be alone. The psalmist, recognizing that God has this penetrating and deep knowledge of Him, he wrote this. He said, Oh Lord, You have searched me and known me. 
So God knows us. There's nothing you need to pretend and show God. You know, sometimes with people, you need to put up your good side. With God, you don't have to do this. He knows you. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You see, God truly knows our need. He knows our need to be loved. It wasn't just something he realized afterwards, but something he knew from the very start. He not only knows you, he knows you specifically and specially. You know, some of us, we like durian, right? Some of us, you know, we, we like to uh, read. Some of us may have secret habits that nobody knows, but you know, God knows you specifically. Whether you're standing up, sitting down, falling asleep, God knows you. That's what the Bible tells us. Now, Christmas has given us this insight into God's will. Sometimes when we go out to buy a, a shirt or a dress for a woman, usually we just you know, go to a shop and maybe you go into Robinson. Uh, well, no more Robinson, right? Marks and Spencer. I heard that's also going, right? So you go in the shop and you just go to the shelf and find something that kind of fits you, right? You buy stuff off the shelf. But occasionally, you want to treat yourself to what is called a bespoke experience. That is to get a shirt or a dress that is tailor-made just for you, cut so that it fits you perfectly and just right. Now that is how well God knows you and me. It is a bespoke experience. God knows us so well that He has tailor-made this experience, this relationship just for you and for every one of us. Now, this comes to the third point, and that's the obvious question. If God wants to be with us so much, right? So much so that He comes to stand eye to eye with us, share with, sharing with us the vulnerability and challenges of life, showing us the way to relate with Him in this thing called the kingdom of God, right? This protective net that saves us all. If this is God's will, where is He today? In Christmas 2020, where is this amazing God to be found? In this pain-ridden world, it is understandable if one should question the presence of God in the midst of our pain and challenges. 2,000 years ago, God came to reveal Himself in history as Jesus the man. And then, on that cross, he paid the ultimate price when He was crucified to bear our sin. Take away all our, I guess, transgressions and make a way for us to be right with God. You see, the separation between you and me and God is not merely one of time and space. It's not simply distance. It is also moral because we are sinners. It is not just a physical problem, it is a spiritual problem. And the reason why we are not able to see God today, to perceive Him, is because of this moral problem, our sinful state. In the Old Testament, people could not look at God. Anyone who sees God would die instantly because, you know, we are sinners. So there's no way for their relationship to work out, right? We are going to end up dead. So on the cross, when Jesus came, He taught that, only those who are pure in heart can see God. But we know that our hearts are not pure. Mine certainly is not pure. I think we can all acknowledge that we lack the purity to see God. So when Jesus died on the cross, He died to remove that last barrier. That last barrier that prevents us from spiritually and morally approaching God. When Jesus was born, He tore down that wall of separation. He was born in order to open up a way so that you and God, so that I and God, so all of us can come together. The cross opens a way through that moral barrier. There's something more that's needed though. It takes more than just passive acceptance of some facts to see God. Every act of God is in fact an invitation for us to have faith, to believe 
And it is in believing that we will see God. I remember coming to this conclusion decades ago when I first became a Christian, I just sat down and just asked myself, if God is really real, I want to see Him. And it was the, it's more than just agreeing to some facts, to some theories, to some religious ideas. It's another thing altogether to step out in faith to experience this supernatural God. And friends, you can experience Him today. I believe that God is here to reveal Himself to you and to me. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3 puts it this way. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Through faith, we gain this insight and understanding. So that is to say that if you don't have faith, you don't believe, you know, it's not going to be possible for us to, to see the reality of God. Faith is not only needed to see the invisible, but it is the key that opens up the door to experience a supernatural reality that is the kingdom of God. So in this grand project of God to be near us, there remains one last step. And ironically, that final step, the final key, does not lie in the hands of the creator of the universe. You know, he who has everything lacks this one final key. Well, on the ceiling of the famous Sistine Chapel is a fresco, a painting by Michelangelo. This is the famous painter, not the, uh, not the ninja turtle. Uh. In this painting, you see God reaching out His hand, right? This is called the creation of Adam. You see God reaching out His hand from heaven towards man. But also in the same painting, you see man reaching out His hand back to God and in the middle, they are connecting, they are touching. That is a picture of how we can experience God. Without our reaching back, without our response, either in acceptance or in rejection, the story of Christmas is only half told. There's no conclusion to it. Will this story of Christmas be a story of love finding a home or will it be ultimately a story of unrequited love? Now that chapter, that closing, concluding chapter is something that you're going to have to write for yourself. And I pray that today you will have the faith to write that final chapter. But some of you will say, Pastor, it's been 2,000 years. Maybe God has changed His mind about us. We are, after all, so small and insignificant in a grand scheme of things. How do we know that the offer of God still stands? Well, James, the Bible again tells us, every good and perfect gift is from above. And this love of God is a gift. It's a Christmas gift for you. It's a bespoke gift for you. From the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. When the writer wrote this, he's thinking about a sundial. And you know how when the sun goes across the sky, the sun is this unchanging thing. But even it moves across the sky, or at least appears to do that, the shadow is going to move along, right? It's going to move. So there is constant change all day. But with God, there is no shadow of turning. He's more stable than the center of our galaxy. He's more stable than the sun. So no, He hasn't changed His mind. Like the unchanging light of the sky that does not move, He still loves us. His love for you has not waned over time. And every Christmas, including this one, is God telling you that He still loves you. His hand is still reaching out like that creation of Adam painting to you, waiting for you to reach your hand back to touch Him and thus completing the story of Christmas. Some of you might say, but pastor, you don't know me. I'm not the kind of person who becomes a Christian. You know that video we just saw a little bit earlier, you know, ice kacang, right? All kinds of stuff inside, not just ice and kacang, right? You got uh, what condensed milk, you got all this six, seven, seven ingredients. God's kingdom is a little bit like that. It's got a place for everybody. In the family, not everyone is the same. God didn't make us all the same. He doesn't want us all to be the same. He has created a family for everyone, including for you. And so this Christmas, God is inviting you and all kinds of people from all walks of life, whichever station, 
whatever condition you're in, He's inviting you to reach out, to touch His hand. Now, there is another way in which we can experience this love of God, to see this love of God, and that we can see it through the love of the community. When you come to church, you're going to experience people who care for you and who love you. So, I want to invite you this Christmas to put your faith in God and give yourself a bespoke Christmas. A Christmas that's specially tailored for you and to write the final chapter of that Christmas story. I want to end with this verse from John chapter 1, verse 12. And it says this, But as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in His name. It's not a hard thing to do. And if you take that step, the Bible says, you become His child. You become part of that family in which God is the Father. And you know what? That makes you and me brothers and sisters, right? So we will look after one another. I want to invite you to consider this. Now today, this is a special moment. In fact, as I said, every moment is an opportunity in which God is extending the invitation to you. I want you to pause from every other distraction for a moment. And right now, where you are seated, or even if you're traveling somewhere, just stop wherever you are, and I want you to consider this invitation. Would you take a step of faith and trust God? Reach your hand back out to Him and say, God, I want to see you. I want to know this wonderful plan you have for my life. Will you come and reveal yourself to me this bespoke Christmas? Will you do that? If you will, just join me in this prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you that you know me and that you're reaching your hands out to me. Right now, God, through faith, I'm going to reach my hands back to you, though I cannot see you. But by faith, I want to believe in you. Will you make me your child? Be the Lord of my life. Through the cross, take away the moral barrier of sin in my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have prayed a prayer, awesome, wonderful. You have taken that first step. And now what I want you to do, get in touch with us. If we are family, we got to get in touch. Send us a note, drop us a line in Facebook or YouTube comments, you know, with a bit of uh, information so that we can get back to you, all right? We really want to touch you, uh, you know, get to know you face to face. And I pray that this Christmas is going to be a wonderful time of turning around to you because He's a God who can turn the negative into the positive. He can turn your life around. God bless you.